Hello. Today we're going to talk about the each method in jQuery. So here's the form that I'm going to be dealing with. I've got some paragraphs. I've got some inputs. Today I'm going to be looking at the inputs. So here's my script tags. Uh, like I said, never in these introductory videos, I always go up to the top and I like to show you, see this right here? This, uh, this is a link to a uh, Google hosted library I'm using. So if you want to use jQuery, you've got a link to jQuery. Otherwise, you won't have jQuery available to you. I have jQuery available to me. That's step one, but I don't do it. All right. So the each method is used to iterate over a set of things. All right. So what the heck does that mean? Doesn't I'll show you what it means. So let's say that I want to select all these inputs here, and I want to give them all a class of red. Well, there's an easy way I could do that. And the easy way would be something like this. I do a selector. And I say, I want all the inputs, right? That's how you select all the tags of type input. And I want to add a class, and I want that to be red. Now, this is not the each method, but it's going to do what I want it to do. So let me tell you what this actually does. So when you use this selector, if it's an ID, it's going to return one thing, technically. Well, it should, because there should you, IDs are supposed to be unique. But, but what this does is this, this returns an array of things, right? So it might have zero things in it if it doesn't match anything. It might have one if it's an ID. It might have a million things in it if it's a tag or a class. And then so I'm saying for every one of those things in that array, I want to add a class of red. This is easy enough to do. As you'll see, it works. Now, sometimes you might need to do something a little more difficult than that. So what I'm going to do down below, so I commented that out, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to select the same set of tags, so all the input tags. But instead of just indiscriminately adding a class to all of them, I'm going to say dot each. And so this is analogous to like a for each, which is part of a lot of languages. So, but it's, it's a function here. Um, so I'm going to do one of my anonymous function calls here. I guess I'll elaborate on it. I just did a video where I talked about it a lot. so I'll, But you didn't necessarily watch that. So here we are. So when you think of a function, generally you think of passing in an argument or no arguments or right multiple arguments. Here that thing we're going to pass is going to be a function, a nameless function. It's called an anonymous function. So a function, empty, parentheses, opening curly brace, just like a function would always have. I go enter, enter. doesn't really matter if you do or don't. Closing curly brace. So far, that kind of looks like it makes sense. But the weird thing is you got to do a closing parenthesis. That parenthesis matches that parenthesis right there. Usually, if you have a closing parenthesis outside of a closing curly brace, it indicates some kind of a weird scope error or something that wasn't closed properly. This is one of the few times where it doesn't represent that semicolon now. Um, because as you can see, this set of curly braces is inside of this open parenthesis, which is weird. And don't forget the semicolon because it's the end of the statement. So this right here is going to iterate through everything in that set. Like I said, when you write this jQuery selector, you probably think of it as grabbing an element, but it really grabs all the elements of, of matching whatever criteria you have. And this worked just fine. It clearly did go through all of them and add the class. And if I was going to do that here, that would look like this. So I've selected them all. I'm going to use this each method to get through them. You might notice I keep using the terms method and function. Uh, they do refer to the same thing. It's the context, which makes them different. And I don't care to explain that. I'm sure I've misspoke five times on it already. All right, so in here, I'm going to write the keyword this. I talked about this, this in a previous video. This is used to reference the current instance of the thing that you are referencing. So while these inputs, they may or may not have unique IDs, but there's definitely a set of them. You can see them. There's four of them. And in this instance here, they do not have unique ID. Oh, I guess they do have unique IDs, but, but I'm not addressing them by their IDs. I'm going to start with the first one, then the second one, then the third one. The way this works is when I'm going through this set, the first one, is referenced, it's called this when I'm looking at it. And then when I get to the second one, that one's called this. I'm doing a lot of talking here, but that's, that's what this is about. It's about understanding what you're doing, not just how to do it. How to do it, I mean, that's just copy and paste. But uh, this right here is going to do what that did right there. Now, if you're like, why the heck would you do that? 
That's good. That means you understand what I'm doing. Right? I refresh and it's exactly the same. Why in the world would I ever do this? Well, you wouldn't do it for this. If all you wanted to do is just do the same thing to all the elements, don't do that. But what you might want to do is something like this. Sometimes you might have some conditional logic in here, like an if. So recall that this is a set. I'm going to iterate through that set of things. Sometimes you might want to look at them and see what the heck's in them. So like, let's say if uh, this, right? So reference the current instance of the thing in the set that I'm looking at, if it's value is null, right? More or less, uh, you know, if, if it's in it is an empty string, I can't explain everything, right? That's how you get the value of something. So if the value of the thing we're currently looking at is nothing, then I want to select that thing and add a class of uh, blue. Doesn't matter. And you see, at this point, you might realize the utility of the each method. So what it's going to do is it's going to, this right here means it's going to select everything with ta every tag, it's an input tag. It's gonna iterate through each one of them. And as I go and look at each one at a time, I call it this. If this is value is nothing, then I set this is class to blue. So this is an example of conditional logic. I reload this page and uh, it's not the best illustration, but you can kind of see that that thing doesn't have a blue border on it. I'll do this one too, right? It's weird because I put something in there and then I refresh and then it's not great because it's bordered by the other borders, but it is doing what it's supposed to be doing. So that's what the each method's about. It's about iterating over an array, right? Like that's what for each generally is for in a language. It's, it's a structure to make it easier to iterate over a set of things and do what you want to do to them. And so this is very uh, valuable in terms of validating form fields, as you can probably imagine. Because that's a that's a context where you're going to actually look at the values of them. You can look at the properties. You can you could you could look at whatever you want. I don't know what you're going to do here in this if block. The thing I find myself doing the most often is looking at the value of of an input. But you could use this for other things as well. So now you know how to use the each method in jQuery. Thanks for watching.